Ever wonder why high humidity makes heat feel worse? Or why homemade frozen fruits go mush and how nutrients rise from soil even in a 100 meter tall trees? It's all about water's amazing hydrogen bonding power rooted in its unique strike. So let's dive in. Water molecules are made up of two hydrogen and one oxygen atoms. Atoms nuclei are like magnets for electrons because they have positive protons. If the magnets equal like HH bond, a positive proton would have neutralized a negative electron charge and molecule would have neutral zero sign. But in water molecule shared electrons tend to be closer to bossy oxygen because its magnet is more powerful or more electron negative. This gives the oxygen atom a tiny minus sign and the hydrogen a tiny plus sign. We call this a partially negative and partially positive charge. As we know, similar charges repel and opposite attract. According to this rule, a water molecule must be linear, but it's bent and it looks like a Mickey Mouse. Spoiler, this bend is crucial for our existence. So, why does it bend? It's a bit complicated, so get ready. Think how oxygen orbitals is described in school, like a house with different floors and rooms. Eight oxygen electrons occupy a house like this. S orbitals are like spheres and P orbitals are a bit like uh, macaroons in 3D. In a water molecule, the outer shell's S orbital mixes with three P orbitals to create four sp3 orbitals, ensuring an even electron distribution. We call this mix sp3 hybridization because we mix one S and three P, right? It's like you mix sugar and eggs and get me rings. The sp3 orbitals aim to be as far apart as possible and form a tetrahedral shape, like a pyramid. Isn't it evidence of global control by secret societies? Nope, pure chemistry. Hydrogen can attach to the top of any of these mixed orbitals, creating the iconic Mickey Mouse shape. The 104.5 degree angle between hydrogen is slightly less than the ideal tetrahedral angle because of the repulsion between oxygen's lone electron pairs. This band is crucial because it makes the water molecule polar. One end has a partially positive charge from hydrogen, while the other end carries a partially negative charge from oxygen. Imagine, if water were linear, it wouldn't be polar anymore and life on Earth would not have existed. Neither would you and me. Because of this, water acts a bit like a magnet itself. The negative part of one water molecule attracts the positive part of another, causing them to stick together. We call this special attraction a hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond is a particularly strong dipole-dipole attraction that occurs between hydrogen atoms bound to highly electronegative atoms, such as nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine, and other electronegative atoms. So they are depicted with dashed or dotted lines. We can find these bonds between two strands of DNA or in protein as well. Try to find them. Here it is. Water hydrogen bonds are short-lived, lasting only a few trillionths of a second. Yet at any moment, numerous molecules form hydrogen bonds with other, forming transient group called flickering clusters. This unique property, a kind of superpower, allows water to climb from the roots to the highest leaves of 100 meters giant sequoias. Picture water as a team of little climbers. As they go up the tree, they hold into the tree's straw-like tubes made of polar cellulose, helping them move upward. These water climbers also like to hold hands and help each other because they are cute and kind. When they reach the leaves and water evaporates, it pulls the other along. We call the interaction between water and a solid surface adhesion and water molecules holding hands with each other is called cohesion. Memory hack, 
cohesion is born within a cozy collective of molecules. Adhesion is sticking to something adjacent. Another water miracle is a surface tension. It's a measure of how hard it is to stretch or break the surface of a liquid. Thanks to hydrogen bonds, water molecules hold into each other very tightly and has a very high surface tension. If you slightly overfill a glass, you can see it in action as the water level rises above the rim. Water surface tension gives a home for small creatures like water striders. After a hard workout, you may notice a bit of sweat on your skin. Can you explain what holds the sweat on your face? In droplets. The cohesion of water molecules and its high surface tension hold water in droplets. The adhesion of water to your skin helps hold the beads in place. If you ever burn yourself with a metal teapot waiting for water to boil, you know that water heats slower than metal. Isn't it strange? Not at all. Higher temperature makes molecules move faster. In the case of water, its hydrogen bonds slow down the movement of its molecules. Because it's easier to run alone than holding hands with a bunch of people, right? Breaking this Bonds require extra energy. When you heat water, it absorbs a lot of energy to disrupt these bonds and raise the temperature just a few degrees. As water cools, it forms hydrogen bonds again, releasing the stored heat and make your tea a comfortable temperature. This same principle applies to the seas and oceans, which absorb a significant amount of solar energy in the summer and release it through the year, creating a mild coastal climate. In your body, hydrogen bonds also play a role in maintaining your temperature. Water helps to cool your body down during sweating. Fast-moving molecules transfer energy to sweat molecules on the skin. Now, the fastest or the hottest water molecule have enough energy to break hydrogen bonds and evaporate, which in turn cools down the body's temperature. Think of it like the 10 fastest runners on the track team leaving school. This would lower the average speed of the rest of the team. Conversely, the formation of hydrogen bonds releases a significant amount of heat, which you may have experienced if you ever which we, if you ever were, if you were ever burned by steam. With your newly accurate knowledge, try to explain the famous adage. It's not the heat that gets you, it's the humidity! Why it's not the heat, but the humidity? High humidity means air is saturated with water molecules. These molecules, like people, tend to avoid crowds and prefer to stay alone on your skin. As a result, there is less evaporation and less cooling. It's usually expected that substances become denser when they turn solid. For example, solid iron sink in liquid iron as does gold and many other substances. However, when you think about Lake Baikal in winter, it surprises you. Ice doesn't sink. It stays on the surface. Water is unique because it becomes less dense as a solid. As you might guess, this is also due to hydrogen bonds, right? Hydrogen bonds in water form and break quickly because water molecules move rapidly. However, when winter arrives or October in Siberia, temperature dropped to zero degrees, causing water molecules to slow down. At this point, they can no longer break hydrogen bonds and a crystal lattice forms, 
as each water molecule bonds with four others. These hydrogen bonds keep the molecules at a greater arm's length distance compared to the fast-moving crowd of liquid water. Ice expands and the number of molecules per unit area decreases, causing water to become less dense and allowing it to float on the liquid surface. When spring arrives, water absorbs heat, causing molecules to move faster and break hydrogen bonds, making water denser until it reaches 4 degrees. At this temperature, water attains its maximum density, after which it, like other typical substances, becomes less denser as the temperature rises. Imagine if water, like most substances, become denser as ice and sand. In such a scenario, every winter bodies of water would freeze completely, leaving no chance for aquatic creatures to survive. However, floating ice act as an insulating blanket, preserving the warmth of the water beneath and preventing it from freezing solid. One little thing as water hydrogen bonds create space for billions of organisms to thrive even in winter. Ice not only protects the creatures below, but also provides a habitat for polar animals, like polar bears and seals. Where are the comics featuring water as a superhero? It possesses incredible superpower and saves more lives than all Marvel, ca all Mar all Marvel characters combined. If you put fruit in the freezer and then thaw it, the fruit becomes soft and mushy. Why does this happen? Fruits contain about 90% water. When water freezes, it expands and breaks the cell walls, leading to change in the fruit structure. Commercially frozen fruits or berries undergo a rapid freezing process, where water doesn't have much time to rearrange and form crystals that could disrupt cell walls. This solid state like in crystals is known as vitrified state. If you put a spoon of a salt or a sugar in a glass of water, it quickly disappears. It doesn't actually vanish, but molecules spread evenly through the water. We call this a solution, a mixture of two or more substances. Water acts as the solvent and salt is the solute. Tea and coffee are also examples of solutions made up of various molecules. So when scientists start a day with a cup of coffee, they are actually drinking a solution. Now. Let's take a closer look to a pot of salty water. Salt is composed of natrium and chloride. Natrium carries positive charge, while chloride carries a negative charge. Opposite attract, they have love and everything is perfect. Until the water comes. Water's dipoles push away natrium, hugging it with their negative oxygen hands. The positive hydrogen part of water attracts and encircles chloride. It's a strategy of natrium chloride love. This surrounding sphere of water molecules around ions or molecules is called hydrated shell. Step by step, ion by ion, water breaks down the salt and transforms it into a solution. Water can also dissolve polar molecules like sugar or even partially ionized proteins like albumin in your blood. All that water-loving molecules we call hydrophilic. A variety of polar molecules dissolve in water, especially in biological fluids such as blood, plant sap and cell cytoplasm. On the other hand, non-ionic and non-polar molecules lack an affinity for water and are called hydrophobic, like vegetable oil, which mainly consists of non-polar CH bonds. Now, let's think about cotton towels. How often do you think about cotton towels? It's time. Cotton is made up of polar cellulose molecules, aka long chain of glucose. It works good because polar molecules attract water, right? But why don't then cotton towels dissolve in the washing machine if it's polar? Sometimes polar molecules can dissolve due to their immense size, such as long chains of cellulose. Let's review what we learned today. The water molecule is polar. 
it is polar due to the oxygen electron negativity causing an uneven sharing of electrons and also due to bent in shape. Water molecules bent due to sp3 hybridization of oxygen. Most of the unique properties of water result from the fact that water molecules are polar and form hydrogen bonds. Adhesion is the interaction between water and a solid surface and cohesion is interaction between water molecules. Thanks to cohesion, water molecules hold onto each other very, very tightly and has a very high surface tension. Water absorb energy to break hydrogen bonds and their reformation release stored heat. Water become less dense as a solid due to the formation of a stable hydrogen bonds. Water can dissolve polar molecules and ions due to its staple nature. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that was helpful and if you have any questions or a specific topic you'd like me to cover it next time just drop a comment below and if you enjoy the video you know what to do. Like, share and subscribe. Take care and see you next lesson. Bye-bye.